Good morning. Uh, my name is Larry Brandt, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Varadara Julu from the University of Alabama in Birmingham. And uh, he wrote an interesting uh, paper with his colleagues uh, that had to do with Waldorf pancreatic necrosis. And we've all had cases like this, and they're very difficult to manage. And uh, when you have a Waldorf pancreatic necrosis, very often these patients need a surgical approach to this, or they need a pancreatic necrosectomy. And uh, the doctor and his colleagues uh, have devised a new approach to this, and it's called multiple transluminal gateway technique. And what they did is they used this technique to see whether or not it would be a good way of accomplishing an EUS-directed drainage of this symptomatic Waldorf pancreatic necrosis and compared it with conventional results. So with that as a brief introduction for what you did, just give me in a few sentences a summary of what you did and your results. You can have about a minute and a half to do this. Right. And uh, patients with uh, very large uh, pancreatic necrosis collections, uh, which is usually more than 15 centimeters. 15 centimeters. That's correct. Uh, we did this endoscopic ultrasound getter approach uh, where we would identify the fluid collection and uh, create a track, deploy a stent, and then we will go back and find another spot in the fluid collection and again dilate the track to about uh, 15 millimeters and place a couple of stents. In some patients, we would make even three tracks. And once we have done that, we come back to the very first spot where we created a dilation and deploy a nasocystic catheter. And the reason we do that is we want to flush saline through one of those drainage catheters so that it will drain through multiple tracks in the cavity. Because these tracks usually seal off very fast and very often ineffective drainage uh, leads to infection. Mm -hmm. So we think that uh, if you create multiple tracks and if you flush through one area, uh, the necrotic contents will be drained very well and patients will symptomatically feel better soon. And then you compared that with a conventional method, and the conventional method that you compared it to was? Uh, the conventional technique is where you dilate and deploy a couple of stents and place a drainage catheter in one spot. In the same hole? In the same hole. So basically, the conventional technique has one hole that you irrigate through and have your stents in, and your technique, the multiple gateway technique, has at least two holes, sometimes three holes, more drainage. That's correct. Did you ever think about using a self-expanding metal stent to keep the holes open in a bigger way? There have uh, been uh, preliminary studies from Europe and the United States looking at self-expandable metal stents. The problem with those stents is that they are not double pigtail. They are very straight stents, right. and there is always a chance that these stents will migrate. And in world of pancreatic necrosis, the last thing you want is uh, the, uh, the introduction of an infection. And then you are committed to going for a surgery to extract that stent. So we never placed a metal stent in these patients. In our opinion, if we can dilate it adequately, to a large size as 15 millimeters and place stents and catheters, that should be a sufficient enough treatment. But how long does it take for a large Waldorf pancreatic necrosis? How long does it take that to heal and shrink up? Generally, we don't leave uh, patients with a, a drainage catheter indefinitely. What we do is once we do this treatment, we repeat their CT scan in 72 hours. 7 to 12? 72 hours. 72 days. hours? That's right. And if the size of the necrotic collection is now less than 50%, we pull the nasocystic catheter, and if the patient is doing good, we let them go home. We bring them back in eight weeks, and then we repeat the CT scan, and if everything has resolved, we pull the stents out. Using that technique, uh, close to 90% of the time, we had a good response. So the time to resolution of the, enti time to resolution of the entire necrotic collection is about eight weeks. And uh, you've documented actual total healing and resolution That's of correct. these uh, Waldorf collections? That's correct. Well, it seems like you've taken something that was very difficult to manage mm -hmm. and made it relatively uh, easier uh, to manage and something that's probably within the realm of anyone that does EUS. That is true. Okay. How do you, uh, are there any factors you can use to predict who you're going to be successful in and maybe who you are uh, likely to fail in? 
Uh, one of the problems is that uh, we predominantly in these studies in endoscopy uh, take patients with a lot of fluid collection, uh, fluid in the, in the necrotic component. If you have too much solid, this technique may not work. Uh, just flushing is not going to get rid of solid necrotic debris. You have to do an endoscopic necrostectomy in these patients. So the rule of thumb is if somebody's got a big necrotic collection that is predominantly fluid, which is at least 70 to 80 percent, then this technique is a good option in lieu of going into a necrostectomy or a debridement. And you judge your solidity or liquidity by CAT scan or by observation of the cavity at the time of endoscopy? Your combination of both because CAT scan is, uh, is a screening technology. We do a CT scan and then you see a lot of solid necrotic material we call the surgeons. On the other hand, during a CT scan, uh, we see it's predominantly liquefied. Then we consult with our surgeons and we think the right approach is endoscopy. Then we do this endoscopic ultrasound guided drainage. But even at times when we do the endoscopic ultrasound, CT scan is not very specific. And if we find too much necrotic debris, uh, we just relegate them to surgery. Did you have any patients in whom a conventional approach was used and then you resorted to your multiple gateway uh, approach uh, to treat them because they didn't respond to the conventional method? We do. Um, usually we place uh, a single track, a stent in patients with necrotic debris, and then at 72 hours, all these patients get a follow-up CT scan because they are inpatients. And at 72 hours, if the patient has got a poor response to treatment, and if it is predominantly liquefied, and these patients are generally very sick, not being good candidates for surgery, then during the same session, we create multiple tracks to drain. And uh, how does it uh, affect you if the patient has a disconnected duct? It really does not affect us a lot. The only change in management that we do in those patients is we leave these transluminal stents indefinitely. We go, we don't go take them because the concern is sometimes at surgery, although they make a six centimeter anastomosis, after two to three years, when you scope them back, you don't see that anastomosis anymore. The stomach just heals off, and that's why patients have recurrence of collections. So in patients with a disconnected duct, uh, we don't even do a follow-up endoscopy. We do a CT scan, and the cavity has resolved. We leave the stents permanently. And we have about 60 patients uh, from our uh, center uh, in the southern U.S. walking around with permanent transluminal stents in the stomach. Those are foreign bodies, right. left indefinitely. There are some controversies, but the advantage is that none of these patients have come back to us with a recurrence of fluid collection. Do you think that, uh, I'm trying to summarize now, and just as a last question, do you think that this technique is something that uh, should be or can be performed in most medical centers, or does a patient have to be referred for this? Should we still be afraid of the walled off pancreatic necrosis? Uh, not really. I think if uh, proper patient selection is the key, if you've got a patient with a large symptomatic walled off fluid collection and there's an expert endosonographer and there's good surgical assistance, anesthesia support, the procedure can be done. The only caveat is that it's a long procedure and the duration can be anywhere between 45 minutes to one hour because you have to do several steps uh, during the whole procedure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much.